Hello students, it's Dr. Sansom. I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to make a quick video about quantum numbers and orbitals and how they're related to each other and how we can identify orbitals by their appearance and how that relates to the quantum numbers that define the shape of the, and energy of the orbital. Okay, so we're gonna start by talking about the quantum numbers N, L, and M sub L. So n is our principal quantum number. And this refers to the shell or energy level. And generally indicates size. So if I have a larger n, that means I'm going to have a larger orbital. Okay, second one is our angular momentum quantum number. I'll just abbreviate. And this one is going to refer to the shape of the orbital, like s, p, d, or f. So the quantum number L equals zero is the same as saying S. L equals one is the same as saying P. L equals two is the same as saying D, etc. Okay, the last one we're gonna talk about in this video is M sub L, which is our magnetic quantum number. And this one is going to refer to the orientation. in space of the orbital. Um, for our s orbitals, this doesn't matter at all. But once we have p orbitals and d orbitals where there's multiple different kinds of orbitals in the same sublevel, then this helps to distinguish between them. So for example, we can have a px orbital, a py orbital, and a pz orbital. And those are all going to look a little bit different from each other. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, draw some orbitals and I'm going to show you what, they, what the quantum numbers are going to be associated with those orbitals. So um, I'm going to start with just an s orbital. Yeah, that's nice. That's going to be my s orbital. And in this case, this is just a 1s orbital. And I can tell that it's a 1s orbital because when I look at it, it's a sphere. So the spherical shape tells me that it's an s orbital. And I'm also looking at it and I don't see any radial nodes. So that tells me this has to be a 1s orbital. Now I'm going to draw the 2s orbital as well so we can compare. So the 2s orbital is going to have a center part and then it's going to have another ring around the outside. My drawing is not amazing here so just like these are all spherical, okay? Um, this one's going to be our 2s orbital. And I want you to notice here, I didn't draw anything in this space. In other words, there's no electron density in that area. And also notice that it is approximately a circle with radius r. That's an r. <laughs> so this one has a spherical shape, so that's still telling me it's an s, but it has one radial node. Now, every time that I step up from the lowest possible energy of that type of orbital, so for example, 1s is the lowest energy s orbital, and now I'm in 2s, this is the next highest, every time I step up, I'm going to get a radial node. And that's true for s's, p's, or d's. You start with no radial nodes, and then at the next energy level, you're going to have a radial node. So this one has one radial node, and that tells me that it's a 2s. Now there's some general rules about nodes, and that is the total number of nodes is going to be n minus 1. So in the 1s orbital, I have zero nodes. 
in the 2s orbital, I have one node, okay? Uh, N minus one. Now, in the second energy level, we also have p orbitals. So let's talk about a p orbital. So I'm gonna draw here a p orbital. So this is approximately a 2p orbital. And the way that I know this is a 2p orbital is that I'm noticing that it has one node that goes right here through the middle. I'm noticing that dumbbell shape, which tells me it's a p orbital. And I'm also noticing that there's one angular, or sometimes these are called planar nodes. So that tells me I have one node, but I'm in the P sublevel. With one node, I should be 2P because my total number of nodes is always N minus one. So in my 2S, I had one radial node and zero angular nodes. And in my 2P, I have one angular node and zero radial nodes. Now I want to point out that I didn't actually indicate an orientation for this. All I've written so far was 2, which is my n, and p, which is my code for l, in this case l equals 1. Um, so that's two of the quantum numbers that would define this orbital but I could have a 2p orbital that goes in any direction. So I should indicate here, let's say this is like the z axis, this would be the 2p z orbital. It would be on the z axis, and that's its orientation in space. So the z here is telling us our m sub l. So those are the three quantum numbers that are going to define it. This time, going in the other direction, again, it has this angular node, but this time it's located on the x-axis. And so this one would be the 2px orbital. Again, my dumbbell shape tells me that it's a p orbital. My one angular node tells me it's 2p because the number of nodes plus one would give me my n. I have one node plus one that gives me two. And because it's on the x-axis, that tells me my 2px. And that's where all three quantum numbers are showing up in this symbol here, n, l, and m sub l. Now for this class, we're not gonna ask you to assign quantum numbers associated with the X, Y, or Z orientation, rather to simply know that there are three possible orientations. So because my L is one, my M sub L value could be minus one, zero, or one. These are all allowed. And that's why That's why we have three different orbitals, 2pz, 2px, and 2py. Now, I'm also going to draw um, another p orbital. This time I wanna draw a 3p orbital. So this will be fun. I'm gonna go with the 3px orbital again. So I'm gonna first start with kind of the same thing I drew for my 2p, but then I need to have a radial node. So I'm gonna have like another little section of electron density out here. And if I draw little dashed lines for my nodes, I have this angular node and I also have, and forgive me that this is not actually totally round, <laughs> just pretend that's a circle, okay? Um, I also have a radial node. So I have two nodes here that I can see. So my dumbbell shape tells me it's a p orbital. I see one angular node. That's this 
plane here, one angular node, and I see one radial node. And so together I have two nodes, so that tells me it's going to be 3p. And I could also draw here the x-axis so that I know that it's 3px. Okay, if I now want to draw a 3d orbital, I'm going to start by drawing some axes because they're going to hopefully help me. So I'm going to draw an x and a y. And... I'm going to do my areas of electron density here in the sort of four quadrants. So I'm getting this kind of clover leaf shape. So I have a clover leaf shape, and that tells me it's a d orbital. They all look like that except for dz squared, which is a little bit different. And if I look at this, I can actually see two different nodes. I'm going to use red for my dashed line here because it's going to go on top of the black. But I've got a node, an angular node, along the x, z plane and along the y, z plane. So I've got two angular nodes. Because I have two nodes total, that's going to tell me that I'm in the third principal energy level. So this is going to be a 3D orbital. Now, in terms of orientation, this one is in between the X and Y axes. So this one's actually called XY. That's the label XY for this orbital. So 3D XY. So now on the screen, I have my 3PX orbital and I have my 3D XY orbital. Both of these orbitals have two nodes. The 3px orbital has an angular node and a radial node. The 3dxy has two angular nodes. So those nodes are really important in terms of telling me what the principal quantum number is going to be. If I add up all the nodes together, then that will equal n minus 1. Okay, now I want to draw one more orbital and it's going to be a 4dxy orbital. So we'll see how we do here. I'm going to keep my x and y axes and I'm going to draw starting out the same kind of thing like I had for the 3d, getting some electron density in these four quadrants. And now I'm actually going to draw in the radial node. Hopefully this will help me. And I'm going to now add the additional electron density that we would have in the 4D. Oopsie. You can't have electron density where there's a node. So got to be careful here. Okay, I did okay. You get the idea here. There's a couple of places that are all a little bit sketchy. Anyway, for this, I would call this my 4DXY orbital. I know that it's D because of my clover leaf shape. It has two angular nodes, the same ones that we saw before, the XZ and YZ plane. I'll mark those with red. Of course, they continue. It's a plane. Uh, two angular nodes. It also has one radial node. So together I have three nodes, which is how I get my four. And I notice that it's oriented in the xy plane. That's its 3D orientation in space. So that's how I get my 4 and my d and my xy. So these three quantum numbers that we have, n, l, and m sub l, are going to completely define for us the energy of the orbital, which includes its size, 
shape, and orientation. There is one additional quantum number, which is m sub s. That one is specific to electrons, so within each orbital we can have two electrons, but they have to have opposite spins. Okay, that's everything for quantum numbers and orbitals. Thanks for listening. I hope it's helpful, and I hope you have a great day.